Okay, everybody. Sorry for the long, long format. We're doing uh, vertical format right now on YouTube. Uh, it's just easier for me to look at this stuff while I'm on Twitter. Because you, sometimes when I do Twitter feeds, I'm usually making fun of like one tweet or something like that someone said. In this case, we're going to be looking at a person's... We're going to be looking through the entire feed. So, anyway. We have Gina Carano. Now, I have... Gina Carano has been that kind of slow burn... Um, fan... I don't know what to call it. You know, admiration as, of her as an actress. Uh, it's been one of those things where first time I ever saw this chick, she was on Deadpool as the villain and she played a really good, like I, I it was one of those moments where it's like, this is really cool, but I'm kind of worried I'm doing something wrong because it's so damn cool kind of nonsense. And then, uh, later on I saw her over in the Mandalorian, which at that time I'd forgotten who she was. And then got reintroduced to her as an actress again. Then I realized where she had been. And since then, uh, I found her Twitter page. Someone sent me her Twitter handle at some point. They're like, yeah, you know, Gina Carrera is under attack by these SJWs. That was a long time ago she got attacked from it. And I've been following it ever since. I like her page, actually. She tries to do, She tries to be really positive about stuff. And this is... This is her getting attacked for something positive that she said before. They wanted SJWs, man. They... They can't compete. They get rid of you. Okay? They use crackonomics. All right? Crackonomics dictates you don't make a better product. You just kill the guy that's making the better product. Okay? SJWs don't like her opinion, so they want to get rid of her. Anything they don't like, they want gone out of their life because that's what mommy did when she was a helicopter parent. But anyway, here's what they got pissed at her over. Gina Carano, open up your businesses and churches. Put whatever regulations you want to because that is your right to that's your right but open them up. You're telling me you're telling me COVID-19 knows the difference between a protest or praise and worship. I haven't been to church in over a decade, but I sure would go now. The world is open, but no one is allowed to work. Working is your right as an American. It gives us purpose, focus, pride, and most importantly, a way to support the ones we love. People are dropping like flies from depression and suicide, overdoses, murder enough already okay this is coming from a woman who participated in the uh i believe in the mix mma so i mean she has to work if you you want to fight and you want to earn a title i don't know if she's earned a title or not she probably has but if you want to get anywhere in the mma you have to work for it mma is one of the few forces out there one of the few sports out there mma and ufc who are basically telling all the wokies out there yeah screw y'all we're not doing the kneeling thing. We're an American company. We're not kneeling for the anthem or nothing. Not not happening. We're not going to paint BLM in the ring. If y'all want BLM, send some BLM in the ring and we'll paint the ring with their blood. I mean, that's... MMA is, an, is right now an original American sport. It has not been pussified. We'll say it like that. It has not been pussified by the left like everyone else, everything else has. But, I mean, she does make a she does make a solid point. I I wouldn't have compared protests to churches. I would have simply compared Walmart to churches, because how is it going to Walmart for essential foods, you know, physical health, not the same as going to church for you know spiritual health? Okay, uh, religion sometimes can help people with their help them process things or deal with things mentally. Some people rely on their church. If you look at religion also nowadays, you see that it's being hit harder than a lot of stuff right now. Uh, churches are being told they're not essential at all. They've tried to shut that, and, and it's usually, it's almost always, the people on the very left side of politics who claim to be Christian, but usually act like a bunch of damn atheists in the process. Now, I don't have a problem with what you believe, okay? I really don't. My problem is when you come over with a bat, and start telling me that I need to believe like you. Then we're going to have a problem. Okay? You're going to catch some lead at some point. But you see all the, the people that are, you know, mostly right now you're getting a lot of people that are coming up. But you got this, the Nickelodeon fan club here. Are you... Velvend, I believe. I This person follows me and I follow them. And it's like, some of these names I can't pronounce. 
but Velvend, thanks for being you. You are blessed, replying to Gina Carano. The Nickelodeon fan club, hashtag BLM. No, she's a danger. Kuma, and you're an idiot. Nickelodeon fan club, hashtag BLM. If I was an idiot, I'd have a billion dollars. Yeah, I don't, no, that, that doesn't work very well. Uh, Spiral Staircase, this guy's also good if you found him on Twitter. Gina Carano doesn't have to throw a punch to hurt. Her words are just as powerful. James Thomas, you're right. With that big swing and a miss, she might have pulled something from her shoulder. Just going after Gina because Gina, dare say, open up the churches. And we've seen... Char this is one of the few times I have seen more hatred towards religious people than any other time in my life. This is the first time I've seen someone go out there, seen a church burned... And then spray paint on there. I bet you will. What was it? I bet you'll quarantine now on the pavement. I mean, people went out there in one church. They actually threw nails into the parking lot. The church had to hold people, hold congregation members off to sweep nails off the parking lot. I'm sorry. You are violating people's right, their civil right to worship. People have a right to practice their religion. Whether you want to, whether you want to tell them to or not. I mean, let's be frank here. Uh, and I know that a lot of people are going to say, "Well, you know, they can practice at home." Well, here's the thing: you can practice atheism at home. You can practice your college at home. You don't need to be at a school. Go home, stay there, and practice from your freaking computer. But some people would like to go to church. Okay, I go to church. We have a six-foot rule inside the congregation. We don't shake hands. And we have a whole, we have like a five-gallon thing of uh, disinfectant for your hands at the door. You disinfect your hands. You go inside. You do. Now, also, you know, Missouri didn't lock down. We aren't seeing half the shit that some of these people are seeing. You see all the, the horrid crap about this nonsense. Let's see, you got more people coming in. This this person here, Kitty voting Biden Harris. That's gonna be that that is just ridiculous right now. Fact the fact you have bots and maggots as the only ones agreeing with you tells me all I need to know about you. This is sort of the guilt by association. Oh, all these people agree with you, therefore you're you're a horrible person because I don't agree with them. It's sort of the same concept of, you know, Trump is a racist. Why? Because the Klan is coming out in support of him. Okay, uh, if BLM came out and supported the president too, would that make him also a BLM supporter? <laughs> uh, no, it wouldn't. Uh, the thing is, it's it's guilt by association. Uh, look, this part person I hate likes you, therefore you you're just as bad as they are. This evil, this person I claim is evil. Uh, they they agree with you, so so that's bad. No, no, some people just agree. I I don't know what the what the white supremacist movements are, are agreeing to. But I mean, let's be frank. The person you're voting for, Biden, uh, Richard Spencer, who is pretty much a racist, I think he he's on the Biden train. So what does that say about you? And it's it's just more of this loony bullcrap that comes from these people. This is, Maya, this is a horrible take. The reason the U.S. is number one in COVID cases is because of people that think like this. Everything non-essential should be shut down. The government shouldn't take care of it. Should take care of its people until rates go down. But you're too ignorant to get that, apparently. Well, now, let me tell you something. At this point in time, before you did this, starvation was not an issue. Alright? In some states, you're not allowed to leave the house without, a, almost, without having to go through the popo. Okay, let me explain to you how this works. COVID will kill me within less than a week. I'll die of starvation within three weeks. Okay, COVID is more merciful a death than starvation. I'll take my chances with the coof, and I'll probably end up beating it. I actually know a guy who's dealt who has caught the coof. Okay, and it's the weirdest thing because he caught it, was around his entire family, none of them caught it. It's been two months since he has caught COVID. He's been gone. He's already gone back to work. His family was never put under quarantine. He got put under quarantine. 
And he said you couldn't keep his kids off of him because his daughter was worried about him the whole time. She'd go in there and, you know, she he would his mom, his wife would come in there and she would find the little girl had snuck in there with dad and snuggled up on top of him because she's worried dad was sick. She's worried it was her last time with him because she's listening to everything on the freaking news. You know, oh my God, you know, COVID's really bad. She daughter didn't understand how dangerous it was. She'd rather spend the last days of her dad's life with her dad. All right. She never caught it. His wife never caught it. She waited on him hand and foot. His kid, none of his kids caught it. He's the only guy that caught COVID. And was over with. He he got done. And he lived through it. We're talking about something that has less that is less lethality now that we know than the flu. Unless you morons, you lefties are going to be pulling out masks and wearing it every flu season. I don't think so. I agree with Jeremy Hambly on this from the quartering. You're going to see COVID magically disappear. My, me and my wife, we have a side bet going on right now that I'm pretty sure I'm going to win, okay? Because I told her, I said, you know, the coop is bad. She goes, yeah, I said, but I bet it disappears after the election. And she said, no, it will not. It's serious. She's a nurse, so she's got to take it seriously. She said, no, it's serious. So now we have kind of a side bet going on, you know. Is, is the coop going to disappear after the election? I have this bet going because I'm pretty sure once this happens, mask mandates will be done. Businesses will open up again. And it'll be like, yeah, we went through this bull crap for a year in 2020 just so the Democrats can sit there and abuse the people and try to force them to to vote for, just say, oh, yeah, it's so bad under Trump. Y'all should vote for Democrats. Vote for the, 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 the chick that's been putting people in jail for I believe she's put him in jail for, like, drug offenses. I'm like, eh, you can smoke marijuana, smoke it at home. Just don't drive. <laughs> That's my thing. Just don't drive or operate heavy machinery. Just, I mean, you can do that. We, we do that with alcohol. People people listen to it, okay? Don't drive buzzed. Don't drive stoned. It, it's very simple. Same thing. But then, uh, you, like I said, uh, you've got these morons out there. you got... The guy that's probably not going to make it through the presidency, in reality, you're probably voting for Camilla, is all you're doing. I mean, and Camilla, Camilla, she's pretty much, um, she's pretty much the worst person I would have in charge because I mean, she's put people to prison before on trumped up charges. I mean, no, 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 no. She increased the incarceration rate in her counties. No, 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 no. We want the prayers. We want the prison system, you know, to to, to use less. Not put more people in there. Because you're putting more people in there. That's less people. You, you tr you, people talk about rehabilitating prisoners and bringing them back out. You're not rehabilitating people very well if you're packing the prisons to the point where you can't get to all of them. Okay? At this point, Christians that are going into the prison system and preaching to these guys to try and save them and turn them away from what they're doing are doing a better job than the prison system is right now. Just saying. Now, this person brings up a point here, Thomas Radcliffe. Yes, Gina, it does, because churches hold indoor events while protests have been outdoors. Aerosol carrying COVID gathers indoors. Dispersed outdoors. I'm truly disappointed that you are urging people to do something proven to be dangerous. You are not who I thought you were. Here's the thing, though. This would be a good point if governors had not shut down outdoor services. There have been services that have been shut down now where the pastor goes out on a podium outside and everyone's in their car six feet apart with masks on and the police still came up there and arrested the pastor for violation of COVID. You moron. Sit back here and tell us that it's, oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, as long as you follow, that it's because it's indoors. Lots of churches said they would hold outdoor pastor. They would hold outdoors. There was one church where everyone was threatened with arrest because the pastor showed up with a, a radio transceiver and was broadcasting a radio service into the parking lot. And they came in and threatened everybody with arrest if they didn't back off. This was around in, uh, I think, like Kentucky or Tennessee somewhere. It was crazy. And we're sitting back talking about this. I'm like, uh, I brought a gun. We'll fight back. I don't have a problem with it. <laughs> I'll, I'll martyr. I, I mean, at that point, you just look at the cop and say, look, I'll martyr for Jesus Christ. It's not a big deal. 
I mean, that's that's all you're doing. I'll be a saint who stood up against your tyranny. Uh, that doesn't bother me one bit. But I mean, when you got churches holding outdoor services, this would be a good point if you had not already gone in there and shut down outdoor services. Okay? And when you look at a protest, there's no distancing with a protest. You're talking people packed in there so tightly that the the air temperature actually rises about three degrees. You can, let me tell you something, and if you can smell the body odor off of another person, congratulations, you're possibly being infected with COOF, okay? You're, you're telling me people packed in there shoulder to shoulder like cattle, smelling each other, breathing each other's recycled air. That's somehow more morally acceptable than people going outdoors in their cars with the windows down being preached to outside. You shut one down, you didn't shut the other one down. Also, on that note, Mr. Thomas Ratcliffe, because I'm, I'm going to hammer this guy one more time. Uh, what about the lockdown protests? Everyone preached against the lockdown protests, but you have no problem with BLM protesters. You're still not, but I want to hear your opinion on the lockdown protests. Because the lockdown protests were just that, they're protests. But you had a problem probably with those lockdown protests because it was going against the, the uh, what was it, the Ministry of Truth's narrative. I mean, frick. Anyway. I've gone on just about as long as I want to do. I'm, I'm making this a long video. I wanted this to be short, but it's getting longer. Gina, Gina Carano, folks. I mean, just... This chick is based in Red Pilled. I mean, this is an actress that we need in Hollywood. Someone to go in there and just take the piss out of Hollywood for a little bit. All right? That's what we need in Hollywood. That's what we need for entertainment to be great again. Um, independent folks, throw this woman some stuff. Throw, throw her some jobs. She's going to need it here before long. And also, can we, you know, I, you know what? Let's start a hashtag. Gina Carrera, Gina Carano as She-Hulk. Okay? I would love to see this woman play She-Hulk. Because she has the attitude to be She-Hulk. She, she has that, not a flirty attitude. She has that sort of subtle, serious, but kind of joking with you attitude. And she's got the fighting experience. She'd make it a phenomenal She-Hulk in a Marvel movie. Anyway, folks, I'm the Last Raider. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notification. Stay safe, stay frosty. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye now.